Live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering Enterprise Connect 2019. Brought to you by Five9. Hello from Orlando, Florida. I'm Lisa Martin with Stu Miniman on theCUBE at Enterprise Connect 2019. Stu and I are joined by a guest from Ribbon Communications. We've got Sasha Guerra, the SVP of Cloud. Sasha, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much for having me. So we've had the opportunity to talk to one of your colleagues from Ribbon before, but let's give our audience an opportunity to learn more about Ribbon, who you guys are, what you do, and then of course we'll talk about some of the great new exciting announcements that you'd make here this week. Absolutely, so Ribbon Communications is a global leader in providing real-time communications. We provide piece parts technology to over a thousand carriers around the world and increasingly to independent software vendors and uh, enterprise. So, we came to existence about 18 months ago with the amalgamation of Sonus and Genman coming together and we're about 18 months old and doing some big things now, so. And a lot of news coming out this week. Talk to us about some of the key announcements that Ribbon is making with some of your partners, AT&T for example. Absolutely, so our Candy Cloud Communications business, which is our SaaS brand, we're a white label platform as a service, providing UCAS and CPaaS services to independent software vendors and carriers around the world. And we're really excited about AT&T's announcement uh, ahead of the conference here. And AT&T, you know, a lot of people have been saying we're waiting for the big tier one service providers to fire back at some of the more well-known uh, CPaaS players out there. And so what we do is we helped AT&T with an end-to-end -end platform as a service play to help them launch their marketplace. And the key word there is marketplace. There's a lot of folks providing APIs and SDKs as you look around the conference here. But when you think about the Fortune 1000 looking for those low code, no code type digital solutions that can have the easy button to launch and transform into the digital uh, evolution that's going on. That's what we're helping AT&T to, AT to do. So it's been, uh, it's been quite the announcement for yes. us. Sasha, I, I love that. We, we've been saying for years, you know, the enterprise really needs an app marketplace just like we have on our phones. It'd be great to have that. You know, you know when, I, when I came into the show, my first time coming here, it's like, okay, how much is it just API compatibility and we're working amongst each other? But as I walk around the show floor, it's like, ooh, well, yeah, I, that would make sense. And uh, these kind of pieces and which ones come together and which one would I, as an enterprise or service provider, just be able to you know, plug into? So can you speak a little bit of that maturation of, uh, of the, the marketplace and you know, what, what the reality is there today? Absolutely, and, and think, about, um, think about that large enterprise that has an existing procurement vehicle with the large carriers. They're getting their data services, their telephony, their collaboration. It's a natural extension to want to sell use cases and digital solutions. And so with the carrier, you've got an existing bill, one bill, now you're adding APIs and SDKs, turnkey digital solutions, and an easy button that's more e-commerce centric. And that's really what we've been able to help AT&T do uh, to really move up, uh, move up the value chain, so. So when you're out talking with customers, and I know one of your customers, Hertz, was on the customer panel this morning during the general session. When you're out talking with customers, talk to us about real-time communication. It's this huge opportunity for customers. It's almost an imperative that they be able to have real-time communications with whoever they're transacting business with. How are you guys helping customers embrace and deliver real-time communications? Absolutely, so we were really pleased to hear Hertz you know, give us a shout out this morning. And you know, our end customer is actually not Hertz. Hertz is a, a customer of IBM and we are helping IBM with their white label uh, platform as a service for their UCAS and collaboration services. And of course Hertz is transforming all of their rental car branches around the world uh, into the cloud using our hosted voice over IP and UCAS services. So we're really pleased about the announcement. Um, you know, so when it comes to real-time communications, I mean this is, you got to think about the customer journey and we've heard this from a lot of folks. The consumer is more empowered than ever when it comes to the customer journey. Gone are the days of you know, necessarily walking into a bricks and mortar shop, um, you know, taking an hour to kind of learn uh, about what's going on. People are making decisions like this because all the information is at the touch of their fingertips. And today it's about customer engagement and it's about making the best informed decisions as possible. And customer engagement and, and especially the contact center is increasingly playing an important role. So we're helping customers like IBM transform their portfolios, fill in portfolio gaps where you know, they can provide new hosted services but at the same time transform that contact center experience and really help drive new sales with engagement tools and new technologies like WebRTC and CPaaS are playing a really important role there. 
So, Sasha, it, it's interesting. You have, uh, for the most part, a degree of separation between yourself and the end consumer. There was one of the press releases that caught my eye, though. The scourge uh, to the consumer today is robocalls. And it's like, most of, I want to turn off my phone number because most of the calls that come through, even when it says it's somebody you think you know, uh, oftentimes it isn't. There was a, can you talk about, there's uh, an engagement that uh, Ribbon has with a, a number of service providers helping to attack this, this big challenge today. Absolutely, so we recently hosted a forum with a number of carriers coming down because there's some studies that show that um, you know, upwards of 50% of calls in the next couple of years are going to be robo calls and they're annoying as heck, depending on the geography and where you live. So with our new kind of end-to-end -end portfolio, which kind of mixes both analytics and our strategic positioning in the core and the edge, the enterprise edge as well as the core of the carrier, we're in a very strategic place to get that information, data mine it, and you know, proactively identify where we're not only getting robocalling, but fraud, and helping carriers and others to monetize that business and do proactive things with that data. So we have a new kind of solution coming out, stir shaking, you'll, you'll hear a little bit more about that. Um, and don't ask me to spell out that acronym, it does actually stand for something that's more uh, technical, but um, you know, we're really excited about what's going on there. And the robocalling industry is becoming quite annoying for a lot of folks. It's a big opportunity for us. Heck, John Oliver did a segment on it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it, 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 so hopefully you, you, your, your company can help, help solve that issue because that, that, that definitely holds us back today. Absolutely. So in terms of industry adoption, we mentioned Hertz as a customer of yours through IBM, but talk to us about some of the verticals maybe that you're seeing as, as leading edge, I think government, healthcare, financial services. Are you really seeing those industries kind of lead in this real-time communications um, opportunity area? Absolutely, like, so we like to think of ourselves more as a horizontal player and specifically all verticals are kind of going towards um, frictionless real-time communications. And you know, we have a great thing going on with Five Nines, for example. Five Nines is a well-known cloud context uh, center as a service player. And one of the things we're doing with Five Nines is you know, they've got a bunch of end customers um, who are revolutionizing their contact center. And so one of the things we're able to do with Five Nines, for example, is enable them with WebRTC services. And it was about you know, this time last year, or maybe a little bit before, when WebRTC ubiquitously kind of got standardized in all the major web browsers. And what we're able to help do with Five Nines is introduce a new frictionless, in-context way of communicating into the contact center over WebRTC, which is great for customers who want to save on the toll-free minutes. It's kind of over the top, web toll-free, but it's kind of in-browser, in-context, like, again, contact center agents have that full uh, contextual toolkit of engagement to be able to preserve customers and upsell and cross-sell and provide great customer service. And we're not really seeing any particular uh, vertical that um, you know, is necessarily adopting that more than the other. We like to think of ourselves as horizontal, but certainly governments, financials, retails, telemedicine, we're seeing tremendous traction across all of those. Oh, go ahead, Steve. Yeah, I was just, uh, uh, being in the cloud, can you talk about some of the relationships with the public cloud? Uh, no, no, there was some announcement with, with Microsoft, I believe with Amazon also. Uh, what, 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 how are you seeing uh, the, the hyperscale public clouds uh, impacting your space? Absolutely, so you know, in this day and age, you've got to be able to fire up new microservices and new cloud services instantly and practically anywhere. And there's reasons for that. Some of that is data privacy, some of it's security, some of it's just you know, latency and so on. And you know, AWS, uh, Azure, we're kind of agnostic to the public cloud infrastructure, uh, but we're pretty excited about some of our announcements. We've been working with Amazon and uh, Microsoft Azure for some time, and increasingly with IBM software as well. And so the ability to fire up some of our piece parts, our session border controllers, our uh, WebRTC gateways up in the public cloud and able to facilitate our channel partners uh, to go to market in rapid, you know, rapid time, it's, uh, it's an important part of our strategy. With Microsoft, um, obviously we're one of two certified uh, vendors, and with Microsoft and Teams, you know, we're, you know, a lot of enterprises are going towards the Teams. We're able to help carriers play in that by having those interconnects to the carriers to provide the voice services and the carrier services and fire up you know, practically instantly in the public cloud. So we're pretty excited about some of those announcements here as well. And what can some folks find out and learn about in your booth here at Enterprise Connect? Yeah, so I think at, your, at our booth you'll, you'll see a number of key topics being highlighted. Obviously the public cloud and the Microsoft uh, as well as uh, some of the other public cloud announcements we've had. 
In addition to that, um, we recently acquired a company called Edgewater, and so our heritage, we've been known very much as kind of the carrier SBC um, player uh, of choice, but we've kind of extended that to the enterprise edge with the acquisition of Edgewater. And what Edgewater provides us is kind of that enterprise SBC, but with SD-WAN. So sd is a growing part of our story, having the end-to-end -end quality of service over the top with analytics, and all the protection of security and all that kind of stuff. So it's a perfect fit into our portfolio and that's another area that you'd come, uh, you'd be able to see at our booth here uh, this year at Enterprise Connect. Excellent, last. So, so, so if I understand that, I'm sorry, so you have an SD-WAN offering? Uh, is it something we've been watching quite a bit in the multi-cloud space and uh, a lot of movement and high growth in that area? Absolutely, so the SD-WAN offering with the Edgewater product offers a number of uh, key services. Obviously the disaster recovery, having multiple broadband inputs and being able to switch from an LTE to another broadband input is part of that. But the analytics and the end-to-end -end quality of service are equally important and you know, for somebody who helps run our uh, cloud communication business, when we go deploy to folks like Hertz, putting that Edgewater um, uh, CPE box on the prem is an important part of our solution to have that end-to-end -end visibility for things like SD-WAN, but also the analytics and uh, inevitably security and protection as well. As we talk about at this event the evolution of communication, the evolution of this event and collaboration, I know we're only kind of halfway through day two here, but I'm just curious, any key takeaways that you have gleaned so far from the event that you're looking forward to bringing back to HQ after this event is over? Absolutely, um, you know, every year's a little bit different. There's always a buzzword or two. I think this year, what I'm starting to see is there's a lot more focus on the use cases as opposed to the technology. You know, in the past, you come here, you talk a lot about the three letter acronym, SIP and UCAS and CPAS and WebRTC. This year, you're seeing a lot more about how can we actually monetize the business? What are the use cases? And you know, as opposed to APIs uh, being a big part of how you get there and the focus on the how, it's more about the what. Like APIs are just kind of de facto and you need them to help um, you know, mask the complexity of the network and monetize and do things like uh, creating new digital solutions and use cases. So, you know, it's just, it's just an example of how people are starting to talk about things this year, as well as analytics and BI. You know, people aren't just talking about how they're doing it, they're showing you what they can do with sentiment analysis, they're showing you how proactive policy can be applied. So that's pretty cool because we're now getting into the fun part of monetizing all this great technology investment we've made for 10 years. And actually showing the business outcomes that it should be delivering, Absolutely. right? That's the, that's the meat, right? That's right, yeah. Well, Sasha, thank you so much for stopping by theCUBE and chatting with Stu and me. We appreciate your time. Thank you so much for having me. Our pleasure. All right. Thank you for watching theCUBE. Lisa Martin for Stu Miniman. You're watching theCUBE.